How to change carb ratio in insulin pump. In this video, we will discuss what carb ratio is, when you should consider changing carb ratio, and how to do it. When you take bolus of insulin to cover meals, the more carbohydrate you eat, the more insulin you should take. As a result, a concept named carb ratio is invented to tell the pump how much insulin to give for a certain amount of carb. For example, a carb ratio of 8 means giving 1 unit of insulin for every 8 grams of carb. Now let's say if the carb ratio is set to 8, how many units of insulin will the pump give you for 8 grams of carb? It's 8 divided by 8, which is 1 unit. What about 16 grams of carb? How many units will the pump give for that? It is 16 divided by 8, which is 2 units. What about 24 grams of carb? It will be 24 divided by 8, which is 3 units. So the pump will divide the carb number by the carb ratio number to get the insulin number. Another thing I would like to bring to your attention is that if you reduce carb ratio, you get more insulin for the same amount of carb. For example, if we reduce carb ratio to 7, it means giving 1 unit of insulin for every 7 grams of carb. Therefore, now you get a little more than 1 unit of insulin for 8 grams of carb. The other way is also true. If you increase carb ratio, you will get less insulin for the same amount of carb. Here, I will pause for a second so you can verify that yourself. You should consider changing carb ratio when your blood sugar is always higher after meal than right before meal because that means you took too little insulin for the meal. Or if your blood sugar is always lower after meal than right before meal because that means you took too much insulin for the meals. Then how to find the right carb ratio? The first step is to check blood sugar right before a meal, enter the carb number and blood sugar number into the pump, take a bolus of insulin according to your pump suggestion, eat, and then check blood sugar again in 4 hours. Compare those two blood sugar numbers. If blood sugar is higher 4 hours after meal than before meal, you're getting too little insulin for the meal. Reduce carb ratio by about 10%, to get more insulin. If blood sugar is lower 4 hours after meal than before meal, then you're getting too much insulin for the meal. Increase carb ratio by about 10% to get less insulin. Let's look at a few examples to better understand this. In this first example, he wants to find out if carb ratio for lunch time is correct. So he checked blood sugar right before lunch, entered the sugar number and carb number into the pump, took a bolus of insulin according to the pump suggestion, ate, and checked blood sugar again 4 hours after lunch. And he repeated this for 3 days. On day 1, blood sugar went up from 123 to 178 over lunch time. On day 2, his blood sugar went up from 111 to 220 over lunch time. On day 3, his blood sugar went up again from 134 to 196. His blood sugar went up over lunch time on all 3 days. He needs to take more insulin for lunch time. Therefore, he reduced carb ratio from 10 to 9. Instead of taking 1 unit for every 10 grams of carb, he now takes 1 unit for every 9 grams of carb. That is about 10% more insulin for the same amount of carb. In the next example, he wants to find out the right carb ratio for dinner time. Again, he checked blood sugar right before dinner, entered the sugar number and carb number into the pump, took a bolus of insulin according to the pump suggestion, ate, and checked blood sugar again 4 hours after dinner. And he repeated this for 3 days. 
you can see his blood sugar went down over dinner time on all three days. He needs less insulin for dinner time. So he increased carb ratio from 10 to 11, which is about 10% change. If you use the continuous glucose monitor, then the whole thing is even more intuitive. Look at the blood sugar line from before meal to four hours after meal. If the line goes up, you need to take more insulin for that meal. Reduce carb ratio. If the line goes down, you need to take less insulin for that meal. Increase carb ratio. Our target is to keep the line as flat as possible. In this next example, he would like to see if the carb ratio for breakfast is right. Again, he checked blood sugar before breakfast, took a bolus of insulin, ate breakfast, and checked blood sugar four hours after breakfast. You can see that his blood sugar went up on day one, went down on day two, and stayed about the same on day three. I will pause for a second so you can verify that. Because there is no consistent trend, he cannot change carb ratio. When you are not able to find any consistent pattern, please make sure your estimation of carb is accurate. Because if you sometimes overestimate and sometimes underestimate carbohydrates in your meals, then you will not see a consistent pattern in blood sugar change. A few important points. First, check a few days. See a consistent trend before making a change to the carb ratio. Second, you only want to test carb ratio when blood sugar before meal is around target level, which is somewhere around 100 to 130 for most people. If your blood sugar is much higher before meal, then you won't be able to figure out whether the blood sugar change over the meal is due to carb ratio or due to additional insulin for correcting high blood sugar. Third, no exercise during the whole four hour period. Otherwise, you will not know whether the change in blood sugar is due to carb ratio or due to exercise. The fourth but very important point, please make sure your basal rate is correct for the meal time before making change to carb ratio. Otherwise, you will not know whether the change in blood sugar is due to carb ratio or basal rate. Then how to find out if your basal rate is correct? You can go to hmf-diabetes.com, search how to change basal rates in insulin pump, and you'll be able to see answers from endocrinologists.